Well, I try, first of all, to clarify the diagnosis to the patients because this is not like a lung cancer. And according to the disease, he can expect a very long survival with a good quality of life. Of course, I have also to face with the specific diagnosis of that patient because my attitude is different in case of polycythemia vera and the sense cell thrombocytemia compared to patients with primary myeloid fibrosis who actually may have a more aggressive disorder. So when I see a new patient with a confirmed diagnosis of idiopathic myelofibrosis, I would like them to have some understanding of the disease biology and what's coming in the future, because if I were in their position, that's what I would want to know as well. I'd, I'd want to know not just about what's going to happen in the next year or so, but where I would be in 10 or 20 years' time. So the impact of a diagnosis of myelofibrosis on a patient's day-to-day -day living is really significant um, in many aspects. First of all, these patients have received a diagnosis of a blood cancer, which is currently incurable apart from by utilising a very toxic modality such as bone marrow transplantation. Myelofibrosis is quite heterogeneous and there are some patients that do very well and others that are uh, very impaired in their in their in their life so but in average uh, let's say that uh, patient with myelofibrosis needs to monitor his blood counts regularly monthly or uh, every other week sometimes uh, and then i see my patients with myelofibrosis usually every 3 months or every six months when they do very well, but they need a quite close specialized follow-up and a serious monitoring of their blood counts just to be sure that when the treatment is applied, it's eff efficient and not toxic. And on the other hand, to be sure that the disease is not uh, changing over time. Although the spectrum of symptomatology and challenges will vary from patient to patient. Um, so, um, some patients who have particularly low risk disease perhaps and by that I mean patients who are in a very early phase of their disease who may not progress for 10 to 15 years have the challenge of, of acknowledging the fact that they have a, a malignant life limiting disorder and they have a physician who's saying actually we're just going to watch and wait there's no treatment that's a challenge and those patients may well be able to hold down a full-time full job but the vast majority of patients, at least three quarters of patients, will have significant symptomatology, which is progressive and hard to treat. The advice that we would commonly give patients in managing the common symptoms, such as weight loss, fatigue, fever, night sweats, um, is varied, but we would usually try to empower the patients to address some lifestyle issues, uh, such as healthy diet, exercise. Some of these patients it may be a challenge for them to eat and to increase their calorie supplementation so we may involve a nutritionist, we may invite, uh, encourage them to graze so to eat little and often rather than trying to eat you know three meals a day. Um, another good way of managing fatigue for these patients we believe but there isn't very good evidence for is actually gentle graded exercise. Otherwise, really, we haven't until recently had good treatments to aid patients in managing these symptoms. It's a serious disease, but however, we have several weapons to fight this disease. Bone marrow transplantation is a serious option uh, that can cure the disease. And there's a, an extensive research on new compounds and new drugs uh, that will also hopefully help us to, to treat them more efficiently.